Good evening. It's Monday, March 30th. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you for joining us. I'm Maya Trabolsi. We're broadcasting remotely tonight. From working to keep our kids to seniors safe, to our groceries and takeout, new efforts are underway to provide more safety to those here in San Diego County. Moments ago, new numbers and announcements were made by local leaders. KPBS reporter Matt Hoffman joins us live from the newsroom with the latest. Matt. Maya, we just got the latest numbers from the county. There are now 603 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in San Diego County. That's up 84 cases since yesterday. Now, the number of deaths still remains at seven people. Statewide, there are now nearly 5,800 cases of COVID-19. That's in addition to at least 135 deaths statewide. Now, Governor Gavin Newsom said today our state is preparing for another surge in cases. To handle it, he says we need three things. One, medical bed space. Two, supplies from protective equipment to ventilators. And third, people. If you're a, a nursing school student, a medical school student, uh, we need you. Uh, if you've just retired in the last few years, we need you. Uh, if you are looking to expand your scope of practice and have particular expertise in any particular capacity, uh, we need you. Newsom is now turning to the public, putting out a call for medical professionals. Technicians, administrators, doctors, nurses, uh, we are calling on you uh, to step up and step in. Newsom wants to add thousands of additional medical personnel as the state prepares for a surge in cases. So the next few weeks are going to be critical in the state of California. In the next few weeks. Uh, we're going to need more to flex and to surge uh, and uh, do more. The governor says everyone can do their part by staying at home and keeping a six-foot social distance from others. And that stay-at-home order has advanced uh, that effort. It's bought us time to prepare. Newsom says throughout the state, hospitalizations are increasing and more people are in intensive care units, but he says it's still manageable for now here in San Diego County. Currently, we are good in terms of where we at, but obviously still being in the calm before the storm, we are looking down line. County health officials today said they too are also getting ready for a surge in cases. We have to be proactively prepared to have the staff, the stuff, and the structures to respond accordingly. We will not in San Diego wait until that challenge is upon us. We are proactively preparing for that. Now. Part of that preparation includes two new public health orders issued today relating to cruise ships. One prohibits cruise ships from docking in San Diego except for refueling or resupplying. Another bars anyone from leaving the ships here without county health officials' approval. And just moments ago, San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner issued an executive order declaring city employees disaster workers. With this designation, any disaster service worker, regardless of their formal classification, or assignment as a city employee can assist the efforts to help protect life and property, support the city's emergency operations center, and mitigate the effects of the emergency. So right there, the city of San Diego also just preparing for another surge in cases and how it might affect first responders. Now, city officials just said moments ago that a second San Diego police officer has tested positive for the coronavirus. Now, that's in addition to one firefighter and four city lifeguards. Go to kpbs.org and click on our coronavirus live blog on the homepage for more information and the latest COVID-19 news. Maya, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Matt. New York remains the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak here in the U.S. Today, it surpassed the grim landmark of 1,000 deaths from the virus. But federal officials are warning every state and city in the country to prepare to handle the level of crisis New York is facing right now. Karen Kaifa has the latest. In Manhattan Central Park, the construction of a field hospital. In New York Harbor, the arrival of the USNS Comfort. The help has come. New York State has passed the grim milestone of 1,000 coronavirus deaths, and New York City says they'll still need to triple their number of hospital beds by May for COVID patients and patients not infected anywhere they can put them. The state with the worst outbreak in the nation and the peak yet to come. What you see us going through here, you will see happening all across this country. The federal government says every U.S. state and metro area should be prepared to face a similar crisis. Officials elsewhere, like Philadelphia, just 90 miles away from New York City, are eyeing that epicenter closely. Uh, we have a very strong social distancing order for the city and for the state. Try to slow that wave and have it be as small as possible. On Sunday, President Trump announced the extension of federal social distancing guidelines through April 30th. Still, 
The nation's top infectious diseases expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, reiterating a bleak projection. I don't want to see it. I'd like to avoid it. But I wouldn't be surprised if we saw 100,000 deaths. Meanwhile, over in Europe, the death toll continues to climb. Italy passed 10,000 deaths over the weekend. Spain, now well over 7,000. In Washington, Karen Kaifa, KPBS News. A new report by the Inspector General for Veterans Affairs reveals shortcomings in the VA's efforts to combat the coronavirus pandemic. KPBS partner iNewsource says the report found the San Diego VA did not have enough nurses, masks, or gowns. At two of its outpatient clinics, people also were not being properly screened for virus symptoms before entering the building. For more on the story, go to inewsource.org. The USNS Mercy is now accepting patients in Los Angeles. The Navy says it started offering care to people who do not have COVID-19. That way, hospitals can focus on caring for coronavirus patients. Naval medical and support staff will care for patients referred to the hospital ship. Today, the last cruise ship scheduled to dock in San Diego began offloading passengers. KPBS reporter Steve Walsh says port officials insist the process is safe. Roughly 2,300 passengers began offloading into San Diego Monday from the celebrity cruise ship Eclipse. The 15-day cruise around South America was scheduled to make port in Chile, but Chilean officials would not allow the ship to dock. Al Cuevos and his wife waited at the dock to catch a glimpse of their friends who were on the ship. Uh, my wife and I were supposed to be on that ship. We were going to get on in Santiago, Chile. The ship anchored outside of Valparaiso, Chile for days before heading to the U.S. They seem pretty happy uh, with things. There's nobody's ill. There's no virus. Uh, uh, they were a little disappointed and confused at first because they, they, there was a mixed messages and they couldn't get off the ship. The ship anchored outside of Valparaiso, Chile for days before heading to the U.S. In a statement, the Port of San Diego says all of the passengers were asked to fill out a CDC survey. The ship staff performed temperature testing before passengers disembarked. The cruise ship terminal has been cleaned and disinfected. This is the last cruise ship presently scheduled to arrive in San Diego. The eclipse will leave tomorrow evening. The last passengers will disembark in Acapulco before the ship anchors off the coast of San Diego with other empty cruise ships. Steve Walsh, KPBS News. With a handful of local grocery store workers testing positive for the coronavirus, many people are wondering just how safe is the food supply? KPBS Shalina Chatlani looks at what's being done to answer those questions. San Diego resident Leslie Padilla says it's been over a week since she last went grocery shopping. Yeah, I'm anxious. I haven't been out grocery shopping for about 10 days, and now I'm, like, out of everything. <laughs> so, but I'm out just trying to keep my distance. Meanwhile, other residents are actively gearing up to go to the store, like Angela Barley. And I think everywhere makes me a little anxious. I mean, using the gas pump makes me anxious. So, I mean, in a way. So, I mean, as long as we're taking precautions, I'm not super worried. Despite the anxiety, residents are still packing grocery stores because simply they need food. Stores around the country have already put in place social distancing measures, limiting the amount of people who can enter at once. But county health officials say some workers in San Diego have still gotten sick, including one at Albertsons in Escondido. Supervisor Nathan Fletcher said the store closed and followed sanitation protocol. And then they reopened, and we do not believe uh, that there is any risk to the public um, at all in this facility or in other food handling facilities. It is really important to note that there is no evidence uh, at all to suggest the transmission of COVID-19 uh, associated with food. But on Monday, Chief County Medical Officer Nikki Fintides followed up. In terms of us... Um, Doing something, there has to be something actionable above and beyond that which we have already recommended. So um, I suspect that as we learn more about this situation, there may be some deliberations that are specific uh, to grocery uh, outlets at a broader global national context. But very honestly, at a local level, um, that has not been specifically discussed. In an email to KPBS, Albertson's spokeswoman, Melissa Hill, said they are taking additional measures like adding plexiglass between cashiers and customers. And Sprout spokeswoman, Kalia Pang, says stores are also installing plexiglass and increasing cleaning times. With that, we're paying attention 
to high touch service areas such as counters, restrooms, carts, and checkout lanes. Pang says in the case there would be a worker who shows up to work sick, he or she would be asked to go home. And Heather Bonomo from the County Department of Environmental Health says officials are supervising stores to make sure these steps happen. The public should expect to see more social distancing. Uh, They could expect to see lines taped off at cash registers or maybe in other high volume areas of the store. They should expect to see increased uh, personnel or uh, grocery worker staff walking around and making sure that people are following social distancing. She says restaurants and businesses are bound by the California Food Code and have to allow workers to leave if they're sick and they have to ensure food is safe. But she says the public also has a role to play in its own safety. My recommendation for all shoppers would be if you are sick, stay home, utilize online grocery or grocery delivery or delivery options as much as possible. She also recommends washing food before eating it. Shalina Chatlani, KPBS News. And while many supermarket and grocery stores make adjustments to pay and schedules, some Whole Foods workers went on a sick out today. They did so to demand better conditions during the coronavirus crisis. Among the major concerns, guaranteed pay off for all workers who isolate or self-quarantine instead of coming to work. The Salvation Army is now stepping in to help feed children during these tough financial times for families. The Croc Center started offering grab-and-go meals for kids under the age of 18. You can drive up to the center between 10 a.m. and noon every weekday. Anyone in the vehicle under the age of 18 can get a free lunch to go. The Salvation Army says the service will last as long as needed. One mom we talked to appreciated having lunch taken care of for the day. It's nice to be able to get out of the house for a couple minutes, get some fresh air, and get some food for my kids that I don't have to cook. Over the weekend, hundreds of cars lined up outside SDCCU Stadium to pick up food donated by the Food Bank of San Diego and handed out by workers from the San Diego and Imperial Counties Labor Council. KPBS reporter Max Rivlin nadler was there. Families from across San Diego County lined up on Saturday morning with their trunks open as volunteers filled their cars with emergency groceries. Up to 35,000 San Diegans are estimated to have lost their jobs in the past two weeks due to the economic fallout of the coronavirus pandemic. James Floros is the CEO of the San Diego Food Bank. He says his organization is up to the task of feeding San Diego during the pandemic and recently put in a million dollar order of food to distribute over the coming weeks. He wants to make sure the food is not only delivered quickly, but safely as well. Well, we have put some measures in place at the distribution site. So we're exercising the social spacing. Uh, everybody has gloves, uh, you know, hand sanitizer, what have you, to ensure that people coming to the distributions are safeguarded. Each family was given around 25 pounds of food, including canned goods, vegetables, fruits, and peanut butter, which Floro says adds up to over 20 meals. We got to kind of streamline this process. And so a car rolls up, this is what they get, they roll, next one rolls in, and off we go. The food bank plans to hold these mass emergency food distributions each week for the foreseeable future. Next week's will take place at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Max Rivlin Adler, KPBS News. Our partners at iNewsource are reporting that a Vista homeless shelter that serves families and single women faces a funding crisis made worse by the coronavirus. Operation Hope needs to raise over $100,000 by June to avoid layoffs and making some people move out. The nonprofit's charity Singleton gets emotional talking about the situation. Our staff works so hard. They are the ones that create the space for our families to be successful. That's what goes through my mind. Almost, almost 24 hours a day. For more on the story, go to inewsource.org. And we're, we're following all of the latest coronavirus developments for you at kpbs.org. Click on the tracking COVID-19 link on our homepage and you'll be taken to a page with all of our recent reports. You can find that right now at kpbs.org. I'm Judy Woodruff tonight on the news hour. The pace of the pandemic, death from COVID-19 spike in the U.S., more than doubling in a matter of days. Coming up at seven after evening edition on KPBS. 
Authorities in the UK had to get creative to discourage people from congregating at a popular spot when they should be staying at home. What was once a beautiful bright blue lagoon is now a black lagoon. Police in the UK used black dye to make the old quarry less appealing to visitors. This apparently is a tactic people uh, police have used before to discourage people from swimming in the water. It's actually toxic. The pH level is about the same as bleach. Here at home, Oceanside is one of the only beaches in the county where people can still walk along the surf. This was the scene over the weekend. Parking lots and playgrounds are closed, and lifeguards are reminding people that gatherings are banned. With sunny skies and temperatures expected to be above average all week, it's a great time to enjoy the outdoors while maintaining social distancing rules. Lauren Rainson has our forecast. Good evening, our weather headlines featuring ample sunshine overall. We will get a few mornings here and there with patchy fog by the afternoon, seasonably pleasant temperatures. Working our way into Tuesday, that's where the warmth is on. It continues to expand region wide. We'll take you through these next several hours on the future cast. Just some morning patchy fog. You get past that instantly. A lot of afternoon sunshine on the way. The closer to the coast you get, yeah, that's where you're going to find a few more clouds, but overall, a lot of sunshine to take us through these next couple of days. After midnight, Ramona's dropping to 44, 54 in the metro, Chula Vista of the low of 51, Oceanside's dropping to 46. There will be the stalled out frontal boundary draped to our north, though. On the other side of that, that's where that cool, the nasty, stormy, unsettled weather is keeping bottled up at. For us, we are dry, pleasant, easy peasy, smooth sailing. Returning to widespread temperatures, 60, 70s, even some places pushing 80 degrees by tomorrow afternoon. You want the shades and by lunchtime, easily toss that light jacket to the side. Carbon copy conditions Wednesday, Thursday, even into Friday with the daily sunshine and the warmth. Along the coast, plenty of sun. You want the shade 69 by Tuesday. We'll jump to the upper 60s over these next several days here. Take you further inland also with plenty of sunshine, 77 on Tuesday. Slightly cooler though. Temperatures will be cooling down just a bit, especially now through Thursday. By Friday, you'll level out again to the lower 70s. Highs in the upper 60s into next weekend. Into the mountains also with abundant sunshine, a cool 59 by Wednesday. Lower 50s Thursday to Friday before those temperatures sort of level out again by the weekend. Last stop in the desert, also with abundant sunshine, a toasty 85 on Tuesday, upper 80s Wednesday. There we go again Thursday to Friday with those slightly cooler highs in the lower to the middle 80s. Reporting for KPBS News, I'm meteorologist Lauren Rainson. Back to you. Macy's is transitioning to what it calls an absolute minimum workforce. They'll furlough most of their 130,000 workers, while more than 500 stores are dark. Online operations won't be affected in the same way. Health benefits will continue for employees with 100% of the premiums covered by Macy's. The company says once business resumes, they will bring back employees on a staggered basis. A walkout today at an Amazon warehouse in New York. Workers there are not happy with the way Amazon is handling things after a confirmed case of COVID-19 there last week. Employees want the warehouse closed and sanitized. One employee says there are at least five employees who have been diagnosed with the virus. Amazon says health and safety is a top priority and employees will get a temperature check each day. People across the country and around the world are taking measures to limit the spread of coronavirus, avoiding crowds, working from home, frequent hand washing, and ordering in instead of eating out. But what about that last part? Is there a risk even if we have meals delivered? Amara Walker reports. With most restaurants across the U.S. shuttered, many of us are turning to food takeout or delivery. But how safe is it? My message around takeout really is um, go ahead and do it. It's a really safe alternative. Dr. Benjamin Chapman, a food safety specialist at North Carolina State University, says there's no evidence that coronavirus is transmitted by food or food packaging, even if coronavirus somehow makes its way into your meal. In general, eating food is low risk and there has not been any evidence to show that coronavirus is transmitted by eating food. And although the heat from cooking is more likely to kill off the coronavirus, Virus. Dr. Angela Rasmussen, a virologist at Columbia University, says the risk of contracting COVID-19 through a hot or even cold meal is extremely low. Coronaviruses in general are not stable at high temperatures, so it is highly likely that cooking uh, food 
will inactivate the virus. Cold foods, we don't know how long the virus um, remains infectious uh, on cold foods. However, for things like produce uh, that you would um, presumably wash prior to eating, uh, that should rinse off any virus. Dr. Rasmussen adds, if the virus is ingested, our stomach would actually get rid of the virus. When you eat any kind of food, whether it be hot or cold, that food is going to go straight down into your stomach where there's a high acidity, low pH environment that also will inactivate the virus. CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta says that if you order food from a restaurant, there are some precautions you should take. What we've uh, basically done is if we receive food, we'll try and take off some of the packaging actually on the porch even and leave it out there. And then when we come in, we sort of wipe any of the surfaces that any of the, the remaining packaging is on and then obviously wash our hands. I mean, again, keeping in mind that it's it's hand touching and then, then hands to, to face. So we're, that, that's how we've sort of approached it. And it, and it seems to have, have worked. I feel pretty good about it. Dr. Celine Gounder, clinical assistant professor of medicine and infectious diseases at NYU Bellevue, agrees that it's human interaction, not interaction with food, that poses the greatest risk. I think the highest risk moment in getting food delivered to you is actually the face-to-face -face interaction, if you have one, with the delivery person. So ideally, you would be able to pay them online, tip them online, or whatever platform you're using for ordering food, and then have them leave it outside your door wait till they leave and then get the food. If you prefer to head to the grocery store to throw together a homemade meal, wiping the products down and washing your hands are key. I would suggest wiping down the external surfaces of, of canned or wrapped foods. You should be washing your fruits and vegetables produce anyway. Soap and water is just fine for that. Making sure you sanitize your hands after you unpack your groceries is also a key step here. And that was Amara Walker reporting. Olympic athletes will now have an entire year to prepare for the Olympics. That's because the 2020 Games will still be happening, but next year. The International Olympic Committee delayed the Games in Tokyo until July 23, 2021. Athletes had expressed concerns that they wouldn't be ready for the Games this summer because of shutdown, training facilities, and social distancing rules. Media Arts Center San Diego had to cancel its San Diego Latino Film Festival and close its digital gym cinema earlier this month because of the coronavirus pandemic. KPBS arts reporter Beth Accomando looks to how Media, Media Arts Center, like many arts organizations, is looking to online options. For the first time in 27 years, Media Arts Center San Diego has had to cancel its San Diego Latino Film Festival because of concerns regarding social gatherings during the coronavirus pandemic. Now it's trying to showcase canceled films like Brazil's Bacurau through digital streaming services. It's working with key distributors to create what it's calling DGC at Home, a virtual theater experience featuring films that it would have been able to screen at the festival or its digital gym cinema. Ethan Vontilo is executive director at Media Arts Center San Diego. Real quickly, we were able to find content from like Kino uh, and Film Movement. They provide us with individual links uh, where these links are just for our specific movie theater. And then each time a person purchases a ticket, a percentage, 50% uh, goes to our independent movie theater. So again, I think every, everyone needs to understand it's not necessarily business as usual. And this is not just for our nonprofit, for, but you know, for the world around us. But this is all new territory as they experiment with different technology. This new process of viewing films means that patrons will likely have to create accounts or sign into services in order to access a virtual ticket. But that's just how film going needs to be for at least a few more weeks and maybe longer. Baco Rao, along with Poland's Oscar-nominated Corpus Christi, are available through virtual ticketing at the Digital Gym Cinema website. Beth Accomando, KPBS News. The San Diego Zoo and San Diego Zoo Safari Park have extended their closures. The parks will remain closed to the public until further notice. Essential staff are still there caring for wildlife and continuing their work to save species from extinction. And millions of Americans are now working from home. Mandy Gaither has some tech tips to help make your work from home life easier. For many, it's a new frontier, condensing your office into your home. If you're struggling to make it work, no worries. Technology is here to help. First rule of Work at Home Club, 
do talk about it. There are a number of web conferencing apps that will allow you to stay in touch with coworkers. Many are easy and free to set up. Consumer Reports suggests Google Hangouts, Zoom Basic, Skype for Business Basic, and Cisco WebEx Personal. If work from home is painfully slow, you may want to look into a new router to speed things up a bit. While you may be used to the sounds of your office, you may not be able to deal with your children or your pets being loud. Noise-canceling headphones can help with that. And if you're having trouble concentrating, there's an app for that. Anti-distraction apps, to be precise, or simply put your phone on airplane mode to help you resist playing on it. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. An update now on our top story. We just got an update from county health officials on the number of coronavirus cases. Tonight, there are 603 cases. That's a jump of 84 cases from yesterday's report. Seven people in the county have died from the virus. And Governor Gavin Newsom said today the state is preparing for a surge in cases. To handle it, he says we need three things. Hospital beds, supplies like face masks and ventilators, and last but not least, trained health care professionals. He's putting out the call for recently retired doctors and nurses. You can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. I'm Maya Trabulsi. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and good night.